Hi everyone and welcome back to the London Watch Collector channel. If you just tuned in to my channel, I'm a watch collector, a watch enthusiast, I'm basically addicted to watches. And on my channel, I'll be sharing my passion for watches using 4K content. I'll be discussing and showing you brilliant timepieces ranging from Seiko to Patek Philippe. So guys, if you enjoy my reviews, please subscribe to my channel, make sure to hit the notification bell and follow me on Instagram. So guys, what can I say? As you guys know, I love my Speedmasters slash my Omega watches always to be on a strap, whether it being a rubber strap or a leather strap or a fabric strap. But basically I love them on straps, not on bracelets. So since I owned my first ever Speedmaster back in 2017, I believe, what I did, I put it on the alligator strap with the Omega clasp. But for some reason it became too dressy, doesn't really suit my lifestyle. It ended up being in the safe, hardly being worn. So when I decided to put the trigger again, end of last year, beginning of this year, on the Hezalite version, I was determined to find the perfect strap. So I had to do lots of business traveling. I went to places like Argentina, Malaysia, Singapore, and I always kept an eye on straps for watches. I've looked online, I was able to see a couple of things that I like, but I was never able to find the perfect strap. So what I decided to do, I went to a local bespoke. So basically what they do is they manufacture a strap according to your design, according to your needs. I'm sure there are lots of them all around the world. So I went to them, I showed them the idea. And the idea that I got is that I wanted something that looks vintage, yet it's modern. I wanted the stitching that they've done on the Speedy Tuesday, on the Ultraman, and I've seen it in the movie First Man as well. So I took my design, I went into the shop, I told them what I wanted. They told me roughly to take a month until it's ready. I was away by the time I received it, so it was just kept in the office until I got back. Once I got back, I saw it and I was over the moon with the quality. And I went into an Omega boutique and I ordered the buckle. I'll show you all the details, reference number. It's actually from a CK2998, the second version of it. And the spring bars are the same spring bars that are given with the watch and this video is going to be demonstrating how to change a bracelet fitting on a NATO strap. Finally we're going to put on the new buckle onto the leather strap and fit it to the watch. With the introduction out of the way let's go ahead and protect your watch first. So the first thing that you need is normal scissors and electrical insulation tape. You just need a small piece to cover the inner part of the lugs so that the tool slash spring bars would not scratch the case of the watch. As you can see there, I have all four sections covered with the plastic tape. So these are the spring bars. You can see the reference number. They usually come with your moon watch, whether it being the sapphire crystal or the hazelite. You have to keep in mind that the spring bars of the bracelet does not match the spring bars of a NATO strap or the spring bars of an alligator or a leather strap, basically. So make sure you always have the right spring bars, the right tools. So the spring bars already on the lugs are actually of the bracelet. So I'm just going to remove them fit into the bracelet and then fit onto the watch. So this tool is the spring bar tool, which is used for all types of watches, including Rolex, Omega, all types of brands, and is made by the Bergeon company, which is a Swiss made company. The reference number of this tool is a 7825. So all I have to do is put in the bracelet and then use the spring bars to just slowly push in the bracelet. And there you go, they're in place. And that's how it looks. And to remove them, it's the same thing in reverse. So next step, I'm going to put back the spring bars so that we can fit the NATO strap.
So guys, this is the strap I'm telling you about, the ones I was able to get my hands on finally. And you can see the stitching it has, which matches the watch. And that's the buckle I told you about. So I'm going to remove the spring bars and I'll show you the difference when compared next to each other. And they come with two buckle pins. Can't use a thick one for this buckle, so I'll be using the, the smaller one. So to fit it, all you have to do is center it, and then the provided spring bar pushed in between. And then the spring bar clicks on the buckle itself and it's all set. Those finger cuts you see are basically used by watchmakers. They're not really comfortable but I thought I'd wear them to give you an idea. So to compare the spring bar you can see the length of it. So to fit it once again all you have to do is push it in, have it equal on both sides before fitting it onto the watch. And to fit it onto the watch, you make sure one of the holes of the spring bar fits into the hole. And for the second one, you use this tool by just pushing in the spring bar. And you'll hear a click, which gives you an indication of it sitting properly. But give it a nice wobble to make sure it's sitting in place. For the second part, you do the same thing exactly. Just push it in slightly and it should click into position. So guys, there you go. So the Omega buckle looks quite classy. If you look at the lugs closely, there are no scratches made, so the protection actually works. And of course, no reviews complete without a wrist shot, so trying it on a wrist. The white slash silver stitching on the black leather strap matches the watch perfectly. And of course, guys, a loom shot. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching.